Okay, so raise your hands up if you believe that setting goals are useful. Okay, so keep them up if you set some 2021 goals. Okay, so keep them raised up if you're actually still working on them. Yeah, 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 of course. So, see, a lot of people forget one major step when they're setting their goals, and that's why the trial period that is January is almost over and you're still yet to sign up for the gym you're still yet to read that book you are still yet to launch that business see I got the answer you ain't got the answers yes I've got the answers that will help you set goals and stressing on the and actually achieve them welcome back to my channel and happy new year how long can you even say happy new year for like i feel like me and my fellow east africans we say up until pretty much easter so happy new year if you are new here welcome karibu my name is janita and i go by the alias monochrome ego and if you are not new here thank you for joining me again and i hope that my sit down videos actually make you proud because it's it's about damn time so this time around, I've seen less new year, new me, and more so people expressing that they hope 2021 is better than the shambolic year that was. Now, a lot of people set goals for the year and that's all well and great and it's the easy part but then it comes to January 31st and amnesia kicks in and you get people saying that they're useless or they don't work when actually the thing that is missing is there is a lack of strategy that is the biggest issue when people set their goals let me give you an example you run a business and you want it to be profitable right you wouldn't actually set a growth or profit margin without having a strategy in mind but yet so many people set goals and leave the rest to God. I mean, he's probably giggling at you as well because if you don't put in any action, then how is he gonna make the rest work in your favor? You have to meet him halfway. In this video today, I'm going to explain to you why setting goals are important, how they're different to resolutions and how to set them and stressing on the and again, how to actually achieve them. I'm sure you've heard it before how important goals are whether this be at school at work or at an event i for one i'm an advocate for them and i believe that they're important not so much so you can tick off another goal or get a trophy or gain all these followers but more so how it can help you develop in life no matter how big or small a goal is there's so much lessons and benefits to setting them whether this be developing resilience discipline or patience and so even if your goal may be as small as or small as trying to eat five a day building up the patience the discipline within it can actually help you in your life in the long run besides imagine a life without any goals and um, i mean going with the flow is all good but i'm going to give you guys an analogy now think back to school well some of you may be still in school so think to secondary school you don't have any target grades given to you you're not aspiring to get any type of grades you're just going with the flow your last piece of homework got a B plus, the mid semester test that you've got was a D minus, your end of year result is a C minus. You've just had fluctuating grades and you kind of just go with the flow. You don't really care what you get. And that's, that's, that's great. I guess if you don't mind that, like, if you don't give a heck about your grades, then go for it. Just go with the flow. Like you don't matter what you come out with, you might come out with an A star, you might come out with a U, it doesn't matter. Now imagine, like in real life, you are given target grades. So think that maybe your teacher is giving you a B as your target grade, but you think you can do much better than that. You want to aim for an A, but right now you're on a steady C. This is during the year. So what do you do? You, you focus on getting that A and you figure out how do I get that A? You go and talk to all the A grade students in top set and you mimic what they are doing. You do extra work every time you get your feedback from your homework 
you go through it, you talk to your teachers and then you resubmit it, hoping to get that A. You do more past papers. You do everything possible that it is to get to an A that towards the end of the year, you recognize an A grade type of answer to a B grade type of answer. So when it comes to that test, you know what you need to do to get that A. Now, it's not guaranteed that you're gonna get that A at the end of the year. You might end up being so nervous during the exam that you don't actually perform as well as usual or we're in a pandemic, so the exams are canceled and they have to use your target grades. But the possibility of getting that A is much higher when you set it as a goal and you work towards it than just going with the flow. Do you get what I'm trying to say here now? So you can go with the flow, but the likelihood of actually achieving that A is much more lower if you just go with the flow as opposed to actually setting the goal and setting that goal has really sharpened your productivity and the way you work to get that A. Now as much as goals are good I actually advocate for setting more resolutions than goals. Now I may have lost you what is the difference between the, the two and I know that some people use them interchangeably well, as for me, I believe the two are actually very different. Take goals. Goals are more quantifiable, it's more of a target, it's, it's a milestone, let's look at it as a milestone. It's something that you could probably set using SMART, which is specific, measurable, achievable, relevant and time. So let me give you one. I want to achieve 10,000 subscribers by the 31st of December. That's very defined, that's a milestone to reach. Now let's take resolutions. These, I believe, are like lifestyle changes that you want to adopt for the long run. This does not end at the 31st of December, but it's something that contributes towards the lifestyle that you wish to have in the future. So let's say for myself, I want to be a French speaking person. So I set that as a resolution, but that's not something that I'm gonna do for the 31st of December and then hope for it to, to be done and then that's it, like I don't work on it again. It's something more long term. And so I believe that resolutions are actually much more better and that's where you get more praying daily or um, eating healthier, more so resolutions as opposed to goals that you can tick off and then just kind of move along. Now this is where I drop the real tea, so get your notepad and pens. This is an exercise I do with my friends every year. Um, I host them and we go through this process when it comes to setting goals. Okay, so first things first, you want to set more resolutions than goals. You can have goals, you might have goals within the resolutions, but I would say focus more on resolutions than on setting goals. Now, how do you do that? First, identify all the key areas in your life that you want to improve now they could be quite a few but life is multifaceted you don't expect to only improve your spiritual life and not the rest of your life there's other parts of your life that you're probably going to want to improve so for example mine are finance um, career side hustle arts content creation personal development these are all areas that I usually put resolutions under okay so the next step is actually identifying those lifestyle changes that you want to put underneath each of those sections so these are the actual resolutions which need to be pretty specific so I'm going to give you a few of mine so that you can understand what I'm talking about so under art one of my resolutions is to draw and paint more now do i want to be an artist no but the reason for me doing it is because it's very therapeutic and it's something i used to enjoy a lot when i was younger but neglected after year nine so i'm making that commitment to get back into it so it's something that i do for fun now another one under the arts would be to get back into ballet now as you can see by me using those two examples those are two different categories underneath the arts. These are two different lifestyle changes that I want to apply to my life under the arts. So within each category, it doesn't mean you have to set one. You can set as many as you want and they won't be conflicting because you can work at them at different times at different paces. I'm going to give you guys two more examples of my resolutions that I've set this year. One being that I want to get more tax related engagements at work and another 
under personal development would be to journal more regularly as you can see my resolutions can be big or they can be small it doesn't matter it's just a lifestyle change that i want to adopt and once i write it down i know that i'll focus on it as opposed to not writing it down and actually forgetting and just doing it here and there and going with the flow as i've given you guys that analogy before okay so the easy part is actually done this is where the work needs to be put in and this is the part that people neglect and then that is why they neglect their goals and think that they're useless so now that i've set my resolutions for the year i actually need to strategize them and schedule them in let's rewind let's take it slow let's break it down so i can explain to you guys now i'm going to use my example of me wanting to become a french speaker just so you guys can understand the process that i go through so this year under education i put french um but i don't just say i want to be a french speaker um, as much as that's good you need to be a bit more specific so for me this year my focus is on improving my speaking and listening improving my use and knowledge of using um, pronouns and understanding how to form questions and i want to be better at using the past and future tenses so that's very specific as opposed to saying i want to get better at french so me learning how to say bonjour could actually tick off as me becoming better but that's not good enough i need to be specific what are my weak areas and so these are my weak areas that i'm focusing on this year now that i've done that i need to understand how i'm actually going to work on those goals so the strategies you have google at your fingertips you can figure out how to actually work on these goals you can use youtube to figure out how to work on these goals because other people share how they work on their goals you could um, look at articles there's so many things so many ways so many courses that you can utilize to figure out how you are specifically going to work on those goals yes you can take inspiration from them but there's not one way to work at a lot of things so take inspiration and figure out what works for you and for your schedule so for me with those goals that i well resolutions that i had set for french i have put the strategies into place i'm going to use duolingo i'm going to do conjugation tests i am going to watch french series and listen to french podcasts and i've got a workbook that i use that will help me actually understand how to form questions to use pronouns and to understand the future and the past tenses do you see what i'm saying here i set the goals but now i know how i'm actually going to work on them so this is where people go wrong is that they say i want to get fitter but they don't know how they are going to get fitter this is what differentiates those that actually get their goals and achieve them and those that get the goals and they don't really nothing really happens you need to strategize how you're going to actually get them this is a very crucial so from there the next step is to schedule them in now how do i schedule them in i personally have a weekly um, calendar it's a schedule that i do and this is where i map out all my non-negotiables so once i've strategized everything and not all things get strategized by the way um it depends on the season um so when i do have my weekly schedule this is for the season i'm in currently so personally i'm right now just working full time and i'm working full time up until the 15th of march after the 15th of March, I'll be working full time still, but I'll also be studying at the side. So my calendar is going to change completely because I have to factor in the fact that I'm studying a lot of hours. So some things can reduce, some things can increase. So right now I'm just focusing between January to the beginning of March. This is my weekly schedule and these are my non-negotiables that will help me work towards particular resolutions. Now don't think that once it hits January 31st you have to work out all of them at go stagger them and build up on them I did that I didn't actually start a lot of the things um, and on the January 1st I only did like the smaller ones that are easy for me or that I've been doing before like using Duolingo um, daily or do my daily devotions there's the ones that I did um, from the January 1st but it was only literally this week when I actually started working out and doing ballet and stuff like that I, I had to build up the muscles to do it I didn't just go straight in so as we would say in dance you'd warm up before you go straight into the combo 
so once you set out your weekly schedule this is where you um you put in all those those strategies whether it be daily whether it be um every other day um once a week you write them down so for me personally i would have every single day duolingo that is standard daily devotions that is standard i have one hour of french revision where i go through my workbook on wednesdays i have put that on the wednesdays i've got um french series that i watched so the last one i watched was the chalet on netflix um i watched that on sundays so on sundays i've put french series you know watch one episode that is the way to schedule it in so these are your non-negotiables now i don't do mine time specific because each day can actually be very different sometimes i have random work meetings that pop up you know you never know you might go out with your friends or something so you have to be a bit more flexible but these are your non-negotiables you need to do those things every single day like you get what i'm saying like every single monday that you scheduled x y and z do those every monday every tuesday you scheduled x y and z do them so that is the, the step to being able to actually implement those strategies and then next me i personally use a diary so here's my diary i use a daily diary whereby i write to-do lists for each day and even though i've got that weekly um schedule i still write those things in every single day so every day i'm always going to write that I need to do um, three lessons of Duolingo. I'm always going to write two conjugation tests for French. It doesn't matter because once you have a to-do list, I believe it's so much better than just keeping it in your head because you even get that rush. You know, you have that dopamine um, flowing through you once you keep checking off these things. So this is what I do personally. I know some people have planners, some people use their Google Calendar on their phone. Whatever works for you, do it. But I would say also daily, Put those things into your schedule even though you have those mapped out so those are my um, non-negotiables and it starts building the power of habits and we've all heard about habits and how useful they are and I believe it so because I schedule these things all the time it becomes second nature I start figuring out what time of day I like doing certain things so at the moment first thing I do is I wake up I stretch for 10 minutes I then do feet stretches for five minutes and then I do whatever assigned dance training i have to do that day i find it much more easier to do it before work rather than trying to do it in my lunch break or after work when i'm tired um after i have my first meeting of the day i like doing my daily versions and duolingo i just like getting those things out of the way whereas things like reading i would like to do later on in the day content creating i prefer doing at night so it takes a while sometimes you, you might have to um, do a bit of trial and error so you can figure out what time or day you actually like doing these things but it doesn't harm you whatsoever and again even if you forget to do something one day or you're so busy just pick up dust yourself off and try again <laughs> yeah so um word to alia just dust yourself off and try again so that's what i do and it's much more better than quitting altogether and that's why the people that actually are successful it's not that they did something all throughout they hit those 60 days and now they've developed that habit or whatever no it's even if they they've fallen off one day they get back up and do it again so obviously like when it comes to let's say um we don't like speaking of that year when it came to the first lockdown i had this schedule i was really great i was really pumped up i was working on all my goals and then the moment they let us out everything slipped because now early in the morning i wasn't waking up and doing ballet early in the morning i'm waking up and beating my face before i go and meet my friends at the park do you get what i'm saying so obviously once the seasons change things fluctuate and it can throw you off balance but you have to reel yourself back in and then say okay what's gonna work for me now so that's what happened so right now i'm reading two books a month well two books this month actually not a month this month because i'm trying to aim for 15 books in a year the reason why january i'm doing two books is because come march i'm going to be reading a lot of textbooks so i would rather read the two books now try maybe two books for february and then once it comes to march I know that I'm going to be a bit more lenient on the reading because I'm going to be studying a lot. Once that exam's over, then I can pick up studying, I mean, reading again. Once I'm on holiday, I can read a bit more, but I'm not going to put too much pressure on myself. So that's why I say, as much as I set these schedules, I am flexible with it. And as long as I can achieve them, then that's all good. 
and finally patience i think patience is important because once it is coupled up with discipline it is equal to success we see it even in karate kid when trey hated picking up his jacket and putting it on his hook day after day but he didn't realize that mr han was actually instilling great lessons in him and you can see how he actually becomes a better um fighter and we see this in other um, disciplines such as ballet or even take olympians they spend four years training for that one moment in the olympics but it takes that patience as well as discipline for them to actually work towards that win and so this is why i say even if you mess up one day it doesn't mean you know just stop it altogether you need to put in them 10,000 hours then 10,000 hours don't have to come all in one day it doesn't have to come all in one year it takes time but as long as you keep picking yourself out and doing it then you're probably going to get much further than just quitting altogether so i hope that you have got something out of this video i hope you found this enlightening if there's something that stood out to you that you really liked please comment below what it is if there's anything else you would want me to elaborate on then also comment below if you like this video please leave a thumbs up and if you have not subscribed already please subscribe and hit that notification bell down below so that you can keep up with my video i really hope that you like the beginning of sit down janita or sit down monochrome ego because she is not going anywhere so thank you guys and i hope that you guys have the best 2021 that we can possibly have whether we do have a lockdown or not bye bye